What up, Snatty Nose Gang? You already know what it is, man. It's your boy D-Bond is back with another video. So look, man, I feel like this video is very reasonable for the people that uh that's doing retail jobs and all of that. Basically, what I'm getting at is, should you be armed while working at a gas station? And my answer to that is, hell to the air. Why? Gas stations are like the main targets for robberies. And within the whole, whole United States, at least 6,000 something robberies occur each year. That being said, should you be on while working at a gas station? Yes, I think so. Working at a gas station is very, very dangerous. I mean, don't get me wrong, every job is dangerous, you feel me? But you gotta understand, a gas station. Now, if you work in during the day, I mean, it's cool. I mean, don't get it wrong, cause shit still go wrong during the day. But if you work in them night shifts, you know what I'm talking about. So this video is really for the night shifters. And if you work night shifts, you know what goes down in the night shifts, man. Especially if you're in the areas that, you know, people go clubbing, college kids, whatever the case might be. If you're working at a gas station, I think you should get on. Especially in the time that we're in right now. And then it's leading up to these holidays. What is it? September or well, October? Well, after October, you got November, December, which is... Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, you know, those two, two months, people be on the road. Most importantly, get your concealed. I'm going to tell y'all a story, man. And this was years ago. I never really even gone this situation up. Like, I got story I got story for days. When I was working at a gas station, at the time I was working at 7-Eleven, I was working the graveyard shifts. So, one night, I'm chilling, you know, I'm on the phone, you know, talking to one of my friends or whatever. I'm smoking my cigarette. So, a van pulls up backs up you know the guy pulled up but he pulled up in like a old caravan y'all know like them 1966 caravans them hutchbacks you feel me <laughs> so he put up on one of them jones i put my cigarette out i opened the door for him i was like hey how you doing boss man he spoke or whatever you know i went behind the counter i'm like what you need boss he like uh let me get a pack of newport 100s i'm like cool so i turn around get the cigarettes log into my uh log into my register now, as I log into my register, right, I was like, doop, I scanned the cigarettes. And as I look over like this, I was like, hey, boss, me, your total is, he had the gun just like this. You feel me? Like, just like this. I was like, oh, shit. He was like, give me everything in the register, including the change. Everything. I was like, damn. I didn't say nothing. I was like, huh, here you go. Boop. Give it to him. Did damn skip it. When something like that happens, the best thing to do is give it up. Don't ever fight for a job that ain't going to take care of you, bro, or your family. Because let me tell you something. You fight for that money. That money ain't yours to fight, bro. You understand? That money is not for yours to fight. You get paid weekly. You get paid a check. They ain't going to reward you. So if something was to happen to you, well, guess what, buddy? They just going to replace you. That's all they're going to do, bro. These jobs, nowadays, bro, they don't care about nobody. I don't want to get off topic. But he came in the store. Whatever, I went behind there, got the cigarettes, swiped it, boom, gave me everything, gave it to him, he took it, he went off, hit the panic button. That was the first time that actually happened, and that happened, like, around, like, Christmas time, like, I think it was, like, two weeks before Christmas, I think it was, like, December, December, it was, like, early in December, you know what I'm saying, like, in the early December, something like that, so that was the first time. And then the second time was literally two weeks later. Ain't that a bitch? Two weeks later, bro. Two weeks later. So this one was kind of different. Now, this one wasn't your average junk. Now, this Robbie right here, I was shitting him, shitting in my pants. Not literally shitting my pants, but I was shitting my pants. I was scared. So, make a long story short, you know, I'm behind the counter. I'm chilling. I'm talking on the phone with my friends. Once again, on the phone with my friend. So I'm sitting down and as I look up, I see a guy with a mask. He has a black hat on. He just walks in. He ain't say, what's up? How you doing? No, nothing. So I'm talking and I'm looking at this guy. How my counter was, you got the counter in front of you. And then on my left hand side, you got like a little donut stand, but it's see-through. You know what I mean? So once he came past that donut part, I knew it was something. I was like, damn, something is off. And next thing you know, he just whipped the joint out. I'm like, damn. Again? This is the second time within two weeks, bro. 
the second time, dude was like, yo, open the register. I'm like, all right. Now, this time, I'm kind of nervous because he came behind the counter. You feel me? He's like, yo, open that joint up. I open the joint up or whatever. He told me to move to the side. I moved to the side. So as he getting the money or whatever, he stopped and looked at me and was like, yo, get on the ground. And at that time, I was like, you want me to get on the ground? He was like, yeah, get on the ground. He said, you making me nervous. And in my mind, I'm like, nigga, how the fuck I'm making you nervous? And you the one that got the gun. How the fuck I'm making you nervous? Yes, papi. I ain't your papi. Yes, said, yes, so I just did what he told me to do. I got on the ground. I sat on the ground. My head like this. He just took the money. He said, don't move. Don't move. I stayed. And that's when he left out. When I heard that door go, bing, bing, I looked up. But when he leave, I be talking again. It hit that panic button. You understand? When you're working at these gas stations, man, you got to be prepared, man. Like, you, it's no joke, man. Because at the end of the day, I could have really lost my life. And that whole situation, man, I was like, ain't no guarantee, man. A lot of people don't come back from that. You know what I mean? Even the guy that was working there years, years, right before me, man, I think his name is Robert. And a lot of people were saying, like, he's a good dude. They knew him. They asked, like, you know, he used to work night shifts like I did. And it was just unfortunate. His outcome wasn't like mine. You know what I'm saying? Because it could have been just like his. But by the grace of the most high, I'm still here to tell you the story. You feel what I'm saying? So with that happening there, you know, what I learned was when you're working at these gas stations, you cannot be on the phone. And if you are, don't have your shit too loud. Don't be jolly because nighttime is very different. That's what shit goes down. It's always somebody scheming and watching around, especially when it's holiday season. When it's holiday season, you know what type of time people be on. They got kids to feed. They want their kids to have gifts and all that. Because at the end of the day, you are your own backup. Before any cops come there, they, you, dude, you are your own backup. I don't give a fuck if they say, oh, well, you know, firearms are prohi prohibited. Well, what if something would have happened? What if I didn't have that firearm? Then what? What would y'all have done then? Would y'all have took care of my family? Would y'all, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say one more story. But here's the funny part. Like I just told y'all, this was years ago that them two robberies had happened to me within two weeks, right? Now, this was last year. This was actually before I left my job. So, make a long story short, man, within those two weeks, I had got robbed. So, I always had that stuck with me. If I ever work in a gas station, I'm always going to stay armed. I don't care what it is. I could tell you now, but I ain't working there. You feel me? So I always had a hoodie and I feel like it was mandatory. You know what I mean? I always had to play the role like, yo, I'm in a cool lane. You feel me? But in reality, I always had that thing with me. You feel me? Because I always felt like if I got in a position to, if somebody came in the store and did something, I'm going to protect me and my crew that's in the store. You understand? That's my position to role. My position to role is to protect people. And by any means necessary, if an evil mom comes somewhere, and I'm able to do something, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. You understand? We ain't got these two-way rights for nothing. If your life is in imminent danger, oh yeah, you got the right to definitely defend yourself, brother. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts about that. Um, Back to the story. So this was in 2023, which was last year. Because, you know, I'll, I'll be working on and off, like, here and there. But I don't stay at a job too long because I like working independently, as y'all know. Y'all know I'm an independent guy. So, I was working at a gas station last year. This is, like, right before I left, though. And you know what's so crazy? I'm not trying to be funny. But this is the time where the immigrants was, like, flying in. Like, you couldn't tell me, like, this wasn't them, bro. You feel me? So, Boom. It's nighttime, right? It's like at least 10, 10, 10, 30 at night, right? So a car pulls up. It was like a little Honda, like a 2005 Honda, something like that. I see that car pull up at the at the gas pump. As I'm just sitting there, you know, I'm listening to my music or whatever. But I'm just waiting for the people to get out the car so I could hurry up, ring them up, get them out the store so I could finish, you know, the rest of the daily shit. I'm sitting there. And I'm like, damn, this car sure been sitting there for a damn little minute now. <laughs> Any minute now. So... No bullshit, man. He was sitting there for at least like 15, 20 minutes. I don't know what they was talking about. But as I'm telling y'all the story, y'all gonna go, y'all gonna see where I'm going. So I'm sitting there and I'm just watching, right? 
So three dudes get out the car. Mind you, three dudes. I'm guessing it's one guy in the driver's seat, which it was because I watched. It's always a driver. And then you got three guys getting out the car. So they had on hoodies. They had it all the way tied up. Here, yeah, tied up. And I'm like, yo, why they coming in here like that? So you know what that threw me back to? That threw me back to that time when I got robbed them two motherfucking times. You understand? Remind you, back then, I wasn't how I am now. I mean, being cautious and smart about things. So this time, I was strapped up around that time. So three dudes walk in the store, and I'm just sitting there looking. But as I'm sitting, one dude go to the bathroom, and the two other guys go to the cooler. Check the peep game. I'm like, yo, something ain't right. So the one dude go to the bathroom, two guys go to the cooler, and then you got the guy sitting in the car. But the glass, the guy that's sitting in the car, he can see all my movements because it's a it's a clear glass. He can see everything, everything in the store, right? So I'm like, okay, something ain't right. Because how my how the counter is, when you come out the bathroom, you could see the the register straight right there. You could just literally come right to the counter. I mean, just come out the bathroom and come right to the counter. And I'm like, something don't feel right. For some odd reason, get where I'm going. How I'm thinking was, okay, this guy's in the bathroom. These guys right here, this guy right here. My instinct told me instinct to move. Get away from the register. So that's what I did. What I moved to was the, the machine fountain where, like, where all the drinks set and shit. So I posted up right there. Now, as I'm posting up there, I could see the cooler and I could see the door. So if anything ever jump off, I could do what I got to do. So as I'm sitting there, the car that was sitting at the gas pump drove around. That's what really threw me off. So I was like, oh, nah, they up to something. So I sat there calmly with my hand in my pants with my Glock 17. And y'all know, <laughs> <laughs> them RIPs, yeah, I had them babies in there. So I'm sitting with my hand, with my shit, and I'm looking at the little, the little mirror thing, because you know some stores, they got the mirrors where it reflects so you can see part of the store. So I'm looking at that, right, and I see the guys just sitting there, just pacing back and forth. The guy that went around, he pulls back up at the same pump. So I guess they knew that I was on to their shit. So the guy comes out the bathroom, and those two guys that was at the cooler, they wound up leaving out the store. Dude, they didn't even buy nothing. So that means they came in there to do something. That's how I'm thinking, right? That's how smart I am. So I'm thinking how they was game planning. They were sitting in the car for 15, 20 minutes, game planning. See how shit going to go. You know, how slow the store is, right? See how many customers come in. So my mind turned into something else. That's why I need you to understand. So I'm thinking, he thinking like, okay. It's kind of slow. I right, y'all look. You go in the bathroom. Y'all go by the cooler right there, right? I'm going to sit right here and let y'all know what he doing. Does it die? Woo, woo, woo. So y'all get ready and, you know, do what you got to do. So I'm thinking in my head, he's telling these people what to do. So as I'm behind the counter, when it's time to go, they could just, he could come out the bathroom and they come from behind the coolers. But my mind was so smart to tell me to move away from the register to go over there where the fountain drinks are and sit. My bad, Joe. My phone died. That's what made me get up and go by the fountain. Let me tell y'all something. If you got your concealers, don't go running your mouth to your people. Oh, I got, I got, I got. Keep your firearm with you. Keep your mouth shut. Protect the people that surround you. Some people might be scared. Fuck all that. You know what you have to do. You put in a position to save people's lives. That's what you're supposed to do. You understand? So with that being said, man, with these holidays coming up, y'all got to be very, very, very careful, man, because they ain't playing no games. Y'all see what's going on right now. All these robberies and stuff like that. But come on now. Pick up where I'm going. Stay on your shit. Stay dangerous. And please protect yourself. You have to protect yourself, man. I'm, I'm very big on that. Protect yourself. Protect your kids. Protect everybody, man, because... These people do not care. As long as they get what they want, bro, they 100% satisfied, bro. They don't give a fuck about what you got going on in your business. They don't care about that. They care about what they got to do to take care of their family. So when you're working at these gas stations, take the headphones out. Pay attention. Listen. Watch your surroundings. 
Watch who's sticking around. Watch who's driving around. What? Watch. Just watch us around this period. You feel what I'm saying? Stay militant, bro. Don't don't do that at nighttime. That's from graveyard diggers. You know what I'm talking about. You have to stay prepared, man, because it could be a lot of encounters, man, that that you can't come back from. So get your concealed. Stay armed. Stay dangerous. Things can easily go left. But look, man, it's your boy D-Bonds. I'm out.